Today we'll build some serious land value in this small town by building a five-star city park on the square in the center of downtown. Hi, I'm Lee, and welcome back to Reddington, a nice little southern town here on the fringes of Appalachia. Uh, we've got a really gorgeous little setup going on. I feel like it's really turning out very, very organically. Uh, the city is growing as it needs to, and it's following the terrain. You know, if we take a look here and we zoom in nice and close, uh, we can see that we've got some nice farming area up here that we've taken advantage of, and then we've got uh, some newer gridded area here for people to live in. We just built in a uh, new hospital, fire, police. That's working out really nicely. And we've got a nice downtown setup with some curved streets because surveyors hadn't arrived yet, and it follows the contours of the land we take a look it's a little harder to see uh, honestly in some cases just because it follows it so perfectly uh, but you give, definitely get an idea as you look up the hill here that oh yeah it that, that goes right up into a whole other area of town where we have some bigger buildings so uh, that's actually looking really cool right there uh, then we've got on the top of that ridge we've got a whole bunch of farming off in the distance over here uh, five star cypress farms and we build a road up along there too we take a look at the uh, lines here for the contours you can see that it goes right on along and we've got a few roads that one road here that cuts in to that area this one just extends down along the top of this ridge for the most part and gives us access to all of this farm land that we have here uh, now we could reorganize that and probably make it a little bit better a little smoother to deal with uh, but we're not going to focus on that in this episode instead we're going to build a park and we're only going to build a park for the most part i'm going to show you some things about land area and a land value that is so that you can see how to build that up in your city right now we've got about 2500 extra money coming in every week and a lot of that is coming in because of cypress farms we've seen a little bit of a drop in the profit but uh that'll probably pick up again at some point as things continue on also have a bakery that's earning quite a lot of money so either way we've got good things going on here that are bringing in quite a lot of a lot of money a lot of income and right now we're already back up to four thousand as the farms continue to operate uh, so let's take a look at land value and we see quite a lot of land value built up and a lot of this here is because we've got a hospital here fire station police headquarters high school and then i believe we have an elementary school over here we got a cemetery right there and another elementary school right here that are all increasing the land value in this area now we want to build a park right here and we can already see there's a lot of high land value built in here now what we can do to really have a good idea of what we're doing as far as land value goes is we can just create a district and i'm going to build you know just create a district right here that goes around downtown about two blocks out from the park that we're going to build here in this episode and we're just going to see how much of a difference the park makes in the land values in the area here and right now downtown has a 22 credit per square meter land value and we're going to create another district over here we'll put another district up here too all right we'll stop there now i'll call this the west end and we'll call this the south side and I'm not even going to worry about this too much here. Uh, I'm not going to bother to check that out. All right, so uh, we have 19 credits per square meter. Land value, 16 credits per square meter on the south side. And then downtown is 22 credits per square meter. And citywide, we have 15 credits per square meter. And we can see that this area here with the pollution and the noise, the cypress farms and our generic industry over here and our 
inland water treatment plants, all those areas uh, have really low land value because of noise and ground pollution and probably traffic as well. If we look at the traffic map, we can see we've got a lot of traffic, uh, but it's certainly not too bad. Uh, I know 84% sounds really low to some of you, but when you consider that uh, we don't have any red, <laughs> I think I'll go with it. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now let's build a park downtown. Uh, we're gonna take this area here. We've got a little Stonehenge thing going on. We're gonna make it a park all around our little Stonehenge. We're gonna just pretend it was a replica that somebody decided to build because some farmer was really bored and thought, hey, you guys wanna help me move some stones? And then we ended up with a Stonehenge in the center of Reddington. All right, so we're gonna call this Stony Park. And uh, look at the contour lines. You can see that all in the center here, this is the lowest part of the park. And then around the roads, we've got a little bit of a drop, especially from the corners, uh, with this being another really low spot over here. Um, now, to create that park area and actually turn it into a real park, we need to start with the main gate. Now, this main gate needs to be placed wherever we want to have the fireworks show up. I think it would be pretty cool to have the fireworks come up over here, or at least I thought so originally, but I'm starting to think that maybe over here would be better. Hard to say. Uh, you know, I'm going to just stick with my original plan here. I just feel like you get a really cool view down either of these streets looking up the hill. We'll start here. And we need to make enough room for our park plaza. This opens up several several of our level one uh, buildings here. So park plaza is something that we're going to put one in each of the four corners. Now, if I were to make this a four by four blank area to put that in, then I would not have room for the park fence to go around the park. So that's why I'm making it five by five here. So I'm going to put these in on each corner of the park here. And as you can see, each of these has an entertainment level. Um, our park plaza gets 50 entertainment and even our gates get 25 entertainment. Our main gate gets 50 entertainment. Uh, so uh, as we build more and more of these, you will see that the entertainment value of each subsequent one, like the first one, you'll get a four full 25 out of it. But as you put a second one in, you might only get 12 and a half entertainment or 12, and it gets even lower and lower after that. So you don't have to, you don't want to go hog wild with too many of these things because they won't really improve the entertainment level overall for the park as much as what we would think. Now, it, what it does do, if we took a look at recreation, is it does add to the recreational value. Let's see your park area. So each of these still gives off the amount of entertainment and it improves the entertainment level, as you can see with some of these commercial areas around the park. Uh, we're gonna expand that out quite a lot more though now, as time goes on. All right, so now I want to build a park path to connect all of these. And I'm gonna make sure that the lights here are facing out from each of the Actually, no, I want him. I want him facing in. No, actually, it doesn't really matter. All right, so we're going to have him face out. That goes in nice and neat. Do the same thing here. That goes in easy peasy. Easy peasy. There we go. All right, so now I can add in my park plazas, uh, but I want to build a circle to go all around. I don't want to just connect these on straight. Eh, I just don't think it looks as good. So uh, what I'm going to do before I build those plazas is I'm going to build a 45 degree angle in each of these. 
And if I had built the plazas, let's let's just throw in a couple here, just to show you what that would have looked like here. If I had thrown in a plaza, then I can get that 45 degree angle by coming off right there and right there like so. You can just use the grid. Uh, I have this already set. Oh, I have the. I want to turn the angle on now because I want to use a 90 degree angle and I want to go three units out from each of these nodes. Okay, now it looks like that one did not stay where I wanted it to. I wanted it to drop down naturally. If I hit page down a couple of times, that'll make it so the fine road tool will do that. Okay, so now I have all of these little little things sticking out, and I just need to connect them. So I want to have the lights facing on the outside. Again. Uh, so it would probably be clockwise. Yes, clockwise. Around Stonehenge. And now I've got a really perfect circle right there. So I can get rid of these guides that made sure I got that 45 degree angle and I can finish placing my park plazas. Okay, so next. Let's see how many entertainment points that gives us. That gives us 298. That's going to give us a really good, healthy start to our park here. So 298 is what we have, and we need a lot more visitors to come through. Now, one of the reasons why the park is laid out the way it is, which makes it really, really super handy, is that each of these streets in the center and each of these other corners on the edge uh, if you wanted to go across, it's actually going to be shorter to go around the circle than it is to go all the way around. Uh, especially if you're going to go from the center to the center on the other side. Uh, so it makes it really convenient for Sims to cut across the park, which is going to drive up uh, the amount of entertainment. I mean, uh, the number of total visitors a little bit faster so we can reach higher levels much faster with the park. All right, so now I want to put a fence in. Uh, now remember, we had 298 in entertainment. Let's see where it ends up after I put the fence in. All right, we have a fence all the way around. And now Stony Park has 306 instead of 298. So the fence does add a teensy bit of entertainment to the park, as do props. Props are really important too. Uh, we will go ahead and add some more props and trees as well. Uh, we'll start off with, oops, start off with these rose hedges here. Let me find those rose hedges. There we go, hedge number two. I call them rose hedges because they do sort of have the look of roses on top. So rose hedges they are, at least to me. All right, so I'm going to place these all around the edge of the park. I'm going to try to keep it as close as I can so that there's like a little bit of an area just between the fence and the hedges. And now I'll continue and do the same thing over here in one of the corners. Okay, so I have a very neat set of hedges right there. Now let's put some trees in. I like these beech trees. So I'm gonna put three in here to start. And then I'm gonna fill in between. And that makes a good corner right there. And then I'm gonna put one on either side of the path here. Let's see, it looks out there would do. And I'll put one in the center. Might tweak this a little bit. I don't think we need to though. That looks pretty good. Yeah, looks pretty good. Let's take a closer look and see if the trunks are in our hedges. It looks like things worked out pretty well. Okay, so now we've got that one corner set up. So let's see, I wanna find something out. All right, we have 357 entertainment. I'm gonna use move it and just clone this. 
So I want to pick props and trees, but no nodes, segments, decal surfaces, buildings, you get the idea. And I'll use the marquee tool that'll pick all the hedges and all the trees. And then I'll use the copy tool, which will give me a whole other set of them. Now I can just rotate these nice and neat. Might be a little tricky because of trees being in the way here. Just to get this lined up. Looks like it's not quite square just yet. Try to line that up as well as I can. That should be pretty close. And now we're at level two. Oh. That didn't quite work out like I'd hoped. It was a little too close on that one side. Let's see if I can do a better job this time. That one worked out. Okay, so let's go back to our marquee tool and fix this side. All right, so now the good thing is, is while those rose hedges have disappeared, they're not actually gone. So if I use a marquee tool, I can select them and get them to come back. Straighten that out a little bit. There, yeah, that's not bad. There we go. I've got rose hedges and trees all the way around the park. They're lined up pretty well. Not 100% perfect, but close enough for government work. And we are the city, so this is a government. All right, so now we're up to 513 because of all the extra props that we added. That's enough to get us to level three. Uh, so. All those props and all those trees are adding to our ability to increase the entertainment level of the park. And if we take a look at the recreation, that should be reflected in the surrounding neighborhood. You can see a lot of the buildings here are turning green and it looks like we're short on power. And you know, probably more accurately to say we're short on heat. And we have geothermal power available to us, so let's find a place to put a geothermal power plant. This will solve our energy problems for the time being. I'm just gonna put this right here by the highway where I'm putting everything because this is gonna get moved eventually. All of it. Really don't want this here. I don't even want these highways here, but I haven't turned on 81 tiles and bought up all the uh, map parts because I wanna make sure that I have a good solid income going first. Now let's speed up the clock and get to level three so we can expand our park. All right, we're level three now. Let's take a look and see our next goal, 720. So we need to add a few more things to this park to get it up to that level. Um, let's start off with some more buildings. We've added a lot of props. Let's put a chessboard in. Put that right here. That gets us up to 618. We need another 100. You build a cafe down here. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that over here? That adds another 50. And we put an info booth. That gets us just short. Hmm. Maybe that's not the best place to put that. Let's smooth that out. We'll sculpt the terrain a little bit. We've barely done that. Actually, we haven't really done that at all now that I think about it. So I'm going to set my brush size to about 30 ish. And I'll smooth that out just a little bit. Let's make the brush a little bigger. Oh, I guess that's not going to make any difference. Okay, so, yeah, that'll work. All right, and let's see here. Let's add some gazebos. Put a gazebo here and here. But, well, actually, right, right there, that should be enough. Those gazebos push me way over 720 uh, so that we can get to our next level, which will happen pretty quick at 5,000 visitors. But we've got a really beautiful little park, and I think I'm going to just work on this terrain here a little bit more. 
able to smooth this out. It would not be an unheard of thing uh, for park to get smoothed out. Even way back when, people sculpted the terrain quite a lot, just by hand. The circle really looks good. <laughs> so while we work on that, uh, let's take a look around. Uh, now, we've got a lot of money coming in. Wow, we've really got a lot of money coming in. 14000 a week. We've got over a million dollars banked. million credits, I should say. Um, so let's build some roads out into the countryside here. Uh, in fact, let's build buy another, another square out here. That's the last one we can buy for now, unless we start using the 81 tiles mod. This will work. Now, I would like to get out to the waterfront so that I can take advantage of it. Uh, a lot of this is going to go away. Uh, and remember, the surveyors, surveyors came in the last episode, so that means that we're looking at straighter streets going forward because they're going to come along, people are going to hire them uh, to make sure the land is nice and straight. The land parcels, because it's a lot easier to survey that way. They want to make their life easier. Okay, so... Uh, it looks like one thing that the surveyors would probably want to do is build a street that runs off over here. Runs at a contour, probably runs back up the hill. I think that would be good. That'd be useful. Alright, so we're going to have some curve here because we have to follow the terrain. Actually, make that curve pretty tight though. 12 units out there, 36 here. And that's a pretty reasonable grade right there. All right, so now I want to just soften that curve a little bit. So put a couple of guide roads in there to set some nodes. Actually, those were more just node roads. I'll just have a four unit by four unit times two curve right there. And then this is going to start out here. This time I will just move out a few units and try to work our way up the hill. 30 units right there. Put a node in. And a curve. And then I need another curve right here. So four units out there. I think that looks like a pretty reasonable angle to go up. Let's hope. Yeah, that looks that looks decent. We'll leave that go. Now, how do we get down to the waterfront? And do we want to connect over here to this other side? I sort of think that we might. But we have this issue of getting down the hill. I think we're going to use a curve. Surveyors aren't going to like it, but that's just the way it is. All right, so, whoops. Oh, we hit level four. Go back to the park here in a second. Looks like we could probably get down most of this. Like so. Let's see how our grade looks. That's pretty good. Now, the next question is how do we get down from the rest of the way? Curve will help take some of this out. That actually looks pretty good. Not as bad as I thought it was going to turn out. All right, and now, uh, you know what? Let's line it up with that rock. It's just that. Just a little bit. 12 units. 12 units. And our grade looks pretty good still. And we can just go straight up to that rock. And we'll put another road right here. Do six units here. No, let's do four. Good 
trying to line that up so that it visually heads towards the rock. Yep, that looks good. Got a little bit of a grade there, but that's not too bad. All right, we're gonna stop right there on that. Come back to it. I want to have this go off here. And I think we'll have it climb the hill here. Turn off our angle here so we can get a little bit bigger angle here. Turn off our guidelines too. That looks good. And then we'll go up the hill. We're getting closer. I'm gonna sweat this too much here. Get our guidelines back here. Five units. Five units. All right, now let's use move it here to, whoops, that's the wrong button. Let's use move it to increase, decrease that grade a little bit here. That should be pretty good. It gets a little steep as it approaches, but that'll be okay. Now let's finish this park, get it up to five stars. How much more do we need here? Uh, we need about 300 more. Let's see if we can get that. All right, so we've got a climbing frame and we've got a couple more gazebos that we can use. Uh, now I should be able to get a lot out of the gazebos right here. 965. Chess boards are 70, and the climbing frame is 150. Ooh, yeah, so let's do that. Let's build a couple of climbing frames here. Okay, and that'll take us well over what we need. 1281. That looks great. Looks like... Yeah, they look straight. They look straight. Straight enough. All right, so now we're well on our way to level five. Let's take a look at our land value while we wait for that to fill in and see what changes we've made. Oh, 24 credits per square meter. That's quite an improvement on our land value across the city. Now let's see the west end what is it, about 22 credits per square meter? It looks like it stayed about the same. The south side is now also 22 credits per square meter. Uh, a lot of that is probably because... Uh, probably because some of the recreation has spilled into some of these areas. Let's take a look at our recreation. Yeah, so we've got a little bit of recreation that's spilling into these areas. It wasn't enough to really propel the west end up a whole lot. I think we were at 19 and now we're up at 22. And over here we were at 16 and now we're at 22. Now what happened to downtown? How much higher did they go? 44. I think we started out at 22, didn't we? It's doubled in value. And that is why we're seeing ridiculous amounts of income for our city as we're waiting for the park to level up. So we never have to worry about money ever again because our park has such a huge entertainment value. Uh, so this is what we will be doing all the way through the series is just putting in parks that really bring home bacon. Now, this is also bringing in 17 credits for every Sim that walks through the gate. I sort of think that's wrong <laughs> to charge them for cutting through the park like this, but Every time a sim passes through one, of, it passes into one of these gates, then they get charged 17 credits that go into our treasury. We can change that though. I'm gonna make that zero. It's gonna make the park cost me 344 instead of making me about 1300 every week, but I can handle that. I'm bringing in tons of money because our farm area over here is still doing a whole lot of income. 4,000, almost 5,000 in profit. That is fantastic. Everything is really booming over here. Booming so much that I'm getting a little bit of a traffic jam, uh, which we'll be taking care of at some point in the future, probably in the next episode or two. 
Let's take a look at traffic while we're here. Yeah, that's the only red spot. It's pretty busy everywhere else, but it's it's working out really well, and our unemployment level is pretty high. That should make it easy to fill in the workers over here. So uh, it's probably a matter of education that they're not taking those jobs anymore, which means we really need to expand the city. Uh, yeah, we only have 20% uneducated. If you remember the last episode, we checked this and it was 60% uneducated. We've already got some who are highly educated and we don't even have any universities going on here yet. Uh, one of the things that we could do to get more highly educated Sims is we could build a public library. Let's add one of those to find a good place here. Uh, I really feel like maybe we should put this downtown. Fit, fill up that block. I think it will. Yeah, we'll fill up this block right here. So we'll build a public library right there. That will add some serious amounts to the education levels that we have here. It'll make it a lot easier. One of the things that you see we don't have a problem with uh, let's take a look at levels. Levels are really important. As land value goes up, then so do our building levels. If we look at our building levels here, we've got a lot of, is this level two? Level two commercial going on here, and that requires well-educated as well as educated sims. Some of these are probably gonna level up to being level three pretty easily as we improve city services, and probably, if, especially if we add public transportation. We'll see level three sims and a lot of times uh, we might see some need for highly educated sims in here we're already in great shape with that i don't think i've seen any not enough educated workers come up at all in this city uh, that's because we've taken our time and grown it nice and slow so there are advantages to taking our time we've taken probably about 10 years in the game to build this that's given our sims almost a full generation uh, where we've had high schools and elementary schools to educate them. Now, as a result, though, of our higher education levels, we now lack, oops, there we are, level five. We now lack uh, enough to keep everybody working in the farms. Take a look at the farms. I think we can get an idea of what our education level is here. Yeah, there we go. If we click here, we can see, whoops, I keep messing it up. If we hover over here, we can see that it really, this this industrial industrial area requires 427 uneducated workers, or that it'll take up to that, but it only needs 71 highly educated and 147 well-educated. So we've got over 300 over-educated workers working in here and uh, 200 of those jobs uh, nobody's really interested in even though they probably make some pretty good money. They're making really good profit here. So uh, we need to bring in more Sims. Sims come into our city uneducated, and so that will definitely fill in the gap. Now, another thing I'm going to do because it's time is I'm going to pave the roads. So let's take a look one more time here at our... Oh, we're up to 46 credits per square meter here. Downtown, let's just pave all the roads downtown. All right, so now let's see what the land value is downtown. 46 credits per square meter. We should see a significant bump in land value from improving the roads. Well, it looks like it's not quite as significant as I'd hoped. <laughs> let's uh, improve a few more of these. Well, it looks like We've already hit pretty well, but uh, in a lot of cases, improving the roads definitely improves land values. We're just not seeing anybody leveling up. Uh, there's one place that I can turn on anarchy here, and I think that'll still look right. Eh, it's not perfect. Now, do we have enough elementary schools? Yes, you're getting close to needing a new high school good on public libraries. I'm just going to tolerate that a little bit there. Uh, let's just see if this has gone up a little bit. Eh, it's gone down a little bit. <laughs> well, anyway, in a lot of cases, improving roads can really make a huge difference in land value. 
Uh, we are probably booming so well with this park here that we really are not going to benefit as much uh, from improving all these roads right in this neighborhood. Uh, look at park areas. Yep. Yeah. So we've got a lot of entertainment value. This really spreads apart, spreads out quite nicely. You're probably seeing higher values. Yeah. 23, 23 in West End and South Side. So we're looking really, really good here. This is going to be easy to expand going forward because I don't have to worry about money ever again. I can do whatever I want and it will work. So now, uh, let's take a look at traffic and see if anything's changed there. So we still have one busy street. A lot of that just filters right into downtown on our square where we have most of our commercial zones. And if you'll notice, I, I've got my commercial zones along our main roads and uh, spreading out from our city center right here. Um, I will probably be adding more commercial as time goes on and more main roads pop up uh, because we want to have our sims have easy walkable access to the commercial areas that they need. So we'll end up adding more as time goes on as we get more population. Uh, our next milestone is pretty close. It'll be a big town at 7,500. And that will give us more ability to expand. It will also introduce uh, high density zoning. And I think more importantly, it will introduce universities. So uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to build our first college here in town. Uh, we've got a lot of really great places to build it. If we turn on our lines, I've got all sorts of like right up here on this hill would be a really cool place for a college maybe over here on this side of town too uh, that's really going to add significantly to the character of our community so stop back in next time when we'll bring reddington into the university era and we'll do something special with the roads too did you enjoy this video please give it a like if you'd like to catch my next video ad free check out my patreon page where you can also get early access to new videos including my next three episodes of 5b1c which should be coming out in just another week or two. Thanks so much for watching. So long!